everywhere you go in the world have every people, every valley, every watershed that people have, it, it, whether I'm in America or I'm in you know, Central Africa, I, I find that everybody has their, their views of what's important and what is wealth to them. And often I find people in NGOs doing international development work going into areas saying, yeah, this is, this is what wealth is, we want this for you, so you can be wealthy. But what we often don't do is ask, what is, the, what is, what is it that you see as wealthy? And a lot of the discrepancies we find in developing a project like this comes from uh, uh, people, an outside people coming into an area and saying, this is what you need. Mm -hmm. And so a big part of this project is about listening. And I think any project anywhere in the world, whether you're doing a project in, in Sandpoint, Idaho for a kid's camp, or a, you, you need to listen to the people there of what they value. Or if you're here in Sado, Ethiopia, what is it that they value? What is it that they need? And so it plays itself out in many, many small ways and sometimes very significant ways. So you might find that there is a particular building practice that you don't understand and you think yours might be, you might be bringing something more valuable to the table in the building practice. And yet what you find is that the way they're doing it um, actually creates more jobs or it, it has um, it has a different outcome because the uniqueness of that site that is something that they, they value more and so we find that the best way to proceed in a project like this is one to do it jointly with the local people this isn't a project of people from Idaho or from the United States or Canada this is a project of people from the United States from Canada and especially mostly Ethiopians so that we're partners in this, we're not, we're not creating something for them, we're creating something with them. And that oftentimes alleviates a lot of that tension, as long as you're listening, as long as you're open, as long as you're moving in humility. Oftentimes when a fair-skinned person comes into a place where it's mostly darker-skinned people, you find that there, there's been a history of fair-skinned people opening the door of commerce and oftentimes um, having a casting system that they bring with them and that's very very much a part of the history of imperialism in Africa and that thread of that still exists and so you find when people come in with fair skin with good intentions um, oftentimes even carry that historical um, that historical prejudice that is there or that historical like we're better or we're from the West and so we know more or something like this crazy way of looking at things and what I find is that one that's not true um, I am constantly dispelling the myth that everything Western ends in a glorious future um, what I find is that when we come into a place is, is in doing it in humility we need to come in and ask ask how it is that I can learn from you so the people where I live and and dwell in my home can also do better so it's an exchange because we need to learn a lot from the African people as well. Um, when I go back to Santa Barbara, I don't go back to a place that has an intact elder culture. And yet here is a place that has that. Here's a place that um, there's, there's most people understand where their food comes from. I go home, that's not the case. Part of our journey with Urati's village is about how do we authentically build something together? How do we work in transparency? And how do we build something for a time beyond our own where it's gonna go beyond all of us fair skinned people being involved? And that has to be a part of the plan. It can't be we're always gonna be involved. Otherwise, to me, it's not a success. And I think that's an important part of, it. that's built into the mission is this long-term resilience is built here and that we learn from them and we bring that resilience back home to us. They have this project, this demonstration site that is, um, potentially could help other orphanages in the region to actually flourish as well. And so it's exciting because there are things that are, you know, like you, you have to navigate very differently in a different culture. And a lot of the journey here is about that. And it's not about saying do it our way. It's about saying, how can we do this best together? And that's, that's really the, the crux of it for me. Yeah.